Again, quantum optics suddenly is open to to this kind of, kind of area. And then quantum optics has also taught people how to make these crazy short pulses, like attosecond pulses, right? Mm -hmm. attosec an attosecond is about the time it takes an electron to make one orbit. I mean, it's amazing, <laughs> right? So suddenly uh, you can test all kinds of crazy things that you could never see in real time before and you get into quantum control. Since you can manipulate the, pro the trajectories of electrons on the real natural uh, time scale, you can uh, try to control chemical reactions in, 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 in novel ways, which is called quantum control. So, so suddenly quantum optics is again talking to chemists. So, so that's the beauty of quantum optics, I think. What were some of the broader questions in the field that you felt your dissertation was responding to or contributing to? This is in the you know mid, mid to late 80s and there were no free electron lasers, uh, high harmonic generation had not been observed, so people were trying to figure out ways of making very fast bursts of x-rays because then you could see the correlated motions of atoms as a material, you know, when underwent a phase change or, or change from one state of matter to another, or in a chemical reaction. These are, you know, there's huge conferences and areas and centers on, on and free electron lasers and all kinds of things that are pursuing that science. But uh, I joke with my current students. So my current students, they make measurements of very fast electron-electron interactions. So like one person made a measurement, a really terrific team, a postdoc and, and PhD um, team, and they made a measurement where they measured an electron lifetime uh, to be maybe 10 at a second lifetime. Just to tell you, you know, of course, and it's 30, there's a 30 year gap. At the time produced the shortest x-ray burst that was ever produced. And it was 1.1 plus or minus one picoseconds. <laughs> The other claim to fame um, was that I had the most powerful femtosecond laser in the world for a while, and it gave five milliwatts. <laughs> but you know, it worked, it got the results, it, yeah. Looking forward, using the powers of extrapolation over your many decades in laser research, where do you see the field headed? Well, of course the big areas are, as I mentioned, well, the X-ray laser, not that's difficult to get funding. Not it takes big machines to make those work. But uh, the biggest area in the last 20 years, I would say, is developing the ultra short pulses. And they've gone from nanosecond to picosecond to femtosecond to attosecond lasers. People have developed those, and the idea is to develop lasers with a high enough rep rate, repetition rate, or power to do. Ex other exciting science experiments. So lasers have become more of a tool, but uh, but people are still developing means to make very short pulses. You can do all kinds of biological experiments because the lifetimes are so short. They're uh, sub picosecond, femtosecond time frames. So to be able to excite a state and then look at it decay in that range can give you a lot of information about the science of atoms and molecules and solids and semiconductors as well. Uh, when I first started, pulse durations were probably maybe, call it uh, five or 10 picoseconds. Now we've been able to get pulses down to, you know, close to 100 femtoseconds. That is maybe a, a factor of 100 in improvement. A picosecond is a trillionth of a second and a femtosecond is one one thousand, is a thousandth of a trillionth of a second. Uh, regarding timing stability, you get, generate these pulses from uh, semiconductor lasers. Even though the pulses come out pretty regularly, there are still some fluctuations or randomness in the timing. And so the pulse can fluctuate in its timing, you know, on the order of a few trillionths of a second and I've been able to reduce that timing uncertainty into the attosecond regime, or basically have improved it by a factor of, let me just calculate here, probably by close to a, a factor of 10,000, improve the timing stability. 
So that's just in the laser development part. So we have greatly improved the timing stability by four orders of magnitude. The pulse durations we have reduced by a factor of at least two orders of magnitude. And the power out we have improved by up to six orders of magnitude. That's where we have, that's where we started and that's where we have come. So it has been, it has been lots of good improvement uh, from my perspective.